Hey, hey, Andrew Twelfty here. How are you going? Bit of an update on, on what's happening with me and, and how things are going. Uh, I hope that you're not being affected too much by this uh, COVID-19 uh, craziness that's running around the world at the moment. Uh, I'm in a position where I'm not really affected other than... Um, I, you know, we're in, we're in lockdown, everything's sort of closed down, but, you know, I've been from home, so it doesn't really bother me, it doesn't seem like any real difference. Um, but I wasn't always in that position, all right? I mean, I've had two real worlds. I was a civil engineer back in the day. I was working, you know, anywhere 12 plus hours a day, five to six days a week. My alarm would go off at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, I'd press sleep for nine minutes, I'd roll out of bed, through the shower, drop some toast in the toaster, push it down, click the button on the kettle, get dressed, because I was in a towel. By the time I was dressed, the toast is popping, butter, Vegemite, coffee out the door by 5.49. If I left a minute later, I would catch the first set of traffic lights and uh, I would be late, because it took an hour and 11 minutes in the morning if I left it by that time to get to work. Um, then I would be there all day. I had to be there to unlock the gate for everyone else. So, all right, so I'd unlock the gate. All the foremen, all the labourers come in. You'd have the boss in one ear all day and the labourers and the foreman in the other ear. And it was a high-stress job being the, the, the manager of a site. Hot, dusty construction site on Aust in Australia. So um, they'd all go home at 4 o'clock and I'd have to work back and catch up on all the paperwork, you know, the forecasting and the cost things and the quoting and all the other bits and pieces. And by the time I got to 5 or 5.30, it was pointless driving home because it would take you near on an hour and 45 minutes. So I just worked back a bit longer and left a little bit later so you'd only spend an hour and 10 minutes in the car instead of an hour 45, all right? So that made it a pretty long work day. And, uh, you know, by the time you get home, you're exhausted from being drained all day. You'd slouch into the couch. You'd have a microwave dinner at best, otherwise baked beans on toast. The kids were pretty much in bed already. If not, they weren't far away. So you really didn't get to see the kids or the family all week long. Now, <clears throat> that one ended rather abruptly abruptly and that forced me uh, you know because we had a bit of a downturn in Australia I got called into the office I thought I thought they were going to send me off into the middle of Australia somewhere but I got sent my marching orders they took the laptop the car the phone everything off of me and then I walked out on the street and I had to catch a freaking taxi home all right you know how put your finger in a bucket of water pull it out and that's what you're worth to your employer all right, the, hole, the size of the hole that's left. In other words, nothing, all right? That thrust me into online, all right? Now, for, for basically the first three or four years, yep, I scrounged to pass, but may, basically I, would, I had gone through my savings and racked up debt in that time until I finally kind of cracked it. But, but there's a story behind that as well. Um, I was uh, living in the Philippines. I, I live here now. Uh, I was back in Australia to collect on an investment that never came through. And at that point, I had one income stream left. I had a Bitcoin program that I'd built up. And I was earning good money on that. I was pretty lazy and complacent because I was pulling, you know, a grand or so a week out of that. All of a sudden, that vanished too. So there I am living in mum and dad's back room temporarily and all of my income just ceased all right talk about a baptism of fire this is how i can relate to the people with the covid 19 carry on here where the businesses are closing and people just turn up out of work and they're stuck at home all right that i was in that exact same position different circumstances obviously but I don't know about you, but my gut, I, it just fell through the floor, this, this, this feeling of like, what am I going to do? I can totally understand. Now, I had a program that I was fiddling with and, and 
it had the right business model, a dual income business model, which which now I know is the only way to go. Um, and basically, I was fiddling around with it, and and it got to an ultimatum. My family tried an intervention. Okay, I tried an intervention to say go back and get an engineering job. Now, I'd had a taste of entrepreneurship by then, and at no way on earth was I going back to do that. What's the definition of insanity? Do something you hate continually for money. All right, I would rather struggle online than go back and be an engineer. So. And I'm sure many could relate because you get to work from home. I get to live in a different country. Um, but I had an ultimatum. Go and get it back an engineering job or entrepreneur and bus. Now, everyone was against me. I, I had a unit that I was paying for in the Philippines. Here's what I did. I had what little savings I had left because I'd burnt through it. I bought a ticket back to the Philippines, one way. All right, That left me $50 and 13 days to wait. I had a mate with a construction yard. I gave him a call and said, mate, can I roll out a swag, a roll out bed in one of your offices for a week and a bit until my flight plane leaves? I had $50 to my name to eat for those two weeks. I had something, uh, a little bit of money coming in at the end of it, but it was billed what I'm now doing or staff for 13 days. And I basically put all fear aside and got to work and got the job done, all right? Um, brilliant mind stroke for me because now that same opportunity a year and a half, two years later, has just created freedom and choices in my life. And it is doing the same for so many others because of the business model. This is one that's gonna last me out and, and, you know, it, it will stand the test of time. So um, I'm so happy and grateful that this has come into my life and that I did make that choice back then. All right. Um, was it easy? No. But, mate, uh, from what I learned through that period, we've put, we've put together a system which makes it a lot easier for new people coming in. Um, and really, it's recession-proof. We, we end up building long-term wealth in a diversified global in, uh, portfolio that, um, that everyone can access for the minimal, minimal amount of outlay. I only ever started with 200 bucks, right? And, and these days, complete financial freedom. We're paying cash for land. We're building a house for cash. The whole bit, all right? So I guess uh, the question being is if, if you can relate to where I was and your, your back's against the wall and, and you, you're looking for an opportunity, absolutely reach out. Now, obviously, if I've sent to you this in Messenger, um, message me there, uh, and we can flick a, a little three-minute video to give you enough information to make an informed decision on whether you want to investigate further or it's not for you. Either way, it's cool by me, all right? Um, but I'm, I'm here to help uh, people in the situation that I was in to get some freedom and choices back in their life. So uh, I know I went on for a little bit here, but, uh, you know, everyone loves a story. So for now, uh, Andrew out, and uh, I'll, I'll speak to you very soon. Be awesome.